everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you already subscribed, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so anyway, I decided to make a video of a spontaneous book review of a book I have not even finished yet but I definitely have some opinions about so far. Uh, maybe I'm rushing into things, but I really don't think so. Uh, so anyway, I borrowed this young adult novel from the library recently. Just started it tonight. Uh, the book is called Perfectly Parvin. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. However, uh, anyway, the author's name is Olivia Atahi. I'm definitely saying that wrong, and I really apologize for that. Anyway, uh, starting to read this book tonight, I literally found myself laughing out loud at some of the cute bits, some of the cheesy bits, and I was like, I'm not even a third of the way through and I'm already worried uh, I'm not going to be able to finish it uh, for some reasons. Maybe it's just that I, this is not my particular genre, it's very much a high school cute romance novel, obviously, and so far from what I'm reading, I, like, I actually should just tell you what the story is about, essentially, uh, before continuing. Man, pardon my rambling. Not done a spontaneous book uh, video in basically ever. Uh, last time I did it was reading out loud Beauty and the Beast. I, uh, man, that was a while ago. Don't want to go back to that right now. Uh, anyway. So, this book is about a young girl, a 14-year-old girl named Parvin, who is just starting high school. She meets this cute boy, she's really happy, looking forward to hitting off high school right in her eyes, which is essentially with a hot boyfriend. And she's already got two cool best friends, smart, quirky, funny, you know, uh, into makeup, fashion, all that, from the description on the inner cover uh, book flap. And then tragedy strikes and her boyfriend dumps her the first day, like during orientation, he just dumps her for being, of all things, too loud and too much. Those are direct quotes of why he dumps her. Reading that, I was just like, what the... Not sure if I can swear on this channel, but like, what the hell? I I was just like, damn, that hurt. I felt that, that, that sucks. And I was just like, oh man. And, um... So, naturally humiliated, uh, she decides to get back at him with a plan, of course. And guess what that plan is? For anybody who's read a young adult high school novel about a high school girl who's trying to get find love, whether or not she's been dumped, get a hot new boyfriend! In this case, a new boyfriend that would totally make her ex jealous. Ugh, like I said, I'm not even a third of the way through this book and man, that part was just so dang predictable. And the best part is I read that part on the inner flap of the book. I guess that should have been a warning enough for me, but I was curious. I thought it would be a cute light read and it still can be. Like I said, I'm not really that far into this book, but there were just some things that I thought felt like I really had to share. So there you go. 
That's one of them. Kind of cliche at this point. Her besties, of course, comfort her the best that they can, but she can't let this go. And she just has to get back at her ex, like, who I'm really struggling to call an ex at this point because, like, come on, this kid is, like, a scrawny teenage boy. She met over the summer, and they literally, he asked her to be his girlfriend how many days before high school starts? Oh, right, I think two. Two days before high school starts, and he's an ex, so I was like, okay, okay. Uh, suspension of disbelief, right? Um, anyway, so her plan is to get back at him by finding a hot new boyfriend. Not just any hot new boyfriend, but of course, the hot new boyfriend who will ask her out to the homecoming dance. Now, how is she going to do this? How is fun, quirky, smart Parvin going to do this, you ask? Ooh, should I dare reveal this particular spoiler? Guess how? She decides she has to become a rom-com girl. A, a rom-com girl. Yep, how does she do this? In other words, she has to change everything about herself. Everything about her nice, quirky personality to become essentially what she thinks her ex and what like boys in general will like again oh my god cliche but i mean you know you can tolerate that right but it's like some some of the interactions in this book really made that kind of cliche and i'm like good god man I would know, I, I don't know anyone in high school who would just be like that. And then again, made me wonder how much do I know about how high schoolers interact with each other? I didn't go through that high school. Um, anyway, so after one night of observing her favorite female characters in her favorite movies, which include The Little Mermaid and The Princess Bride, lovely female role models, I will tell you more on that later. She thinks she knows enough to make herself into perfect girlfriend material for this uh, mysterious new boyfriend she's gonna f somehow find in high school. Ugh. Guess what happens next? Enter the teenage heartthrob. That is a quote from the book flap. Uh, Maddie. And it's like, okay. Of course she ends up deciding that the hottest guy in school is gonna have to be her new boyfriend. Gosh, I would never have been able to predict that, right? However, of course, as the inner cover of the book states, Little does she realize how difficult it will be to become an ideal rom-com girl and to stay that way. I mean, I can't imagine why that would be difficult, right? Totally erasing the best parts of your own personality and completely molding yourself into something else would totally not be difficult, right? I mean, I could see you doing that for maybe a day, half a day, okay fine a day but whatever such is the plot of this book how will it end oh i have absolutely no idea okay i could see a couple of ways i'm essentially predicting a couple of ways that this book is gonna end how this is gonna go i'll tell you that in a moment but first so what i think of this book so far Obviously, in case you guys can't tell, I am finding it to be incredibly cliche, like literally obnoxiously so. And uh, okay, I should say this, I am really trying hard to write a book myself, actually more than one. Well, okay, another time that. So I know how hard writing is and I'm not 
trying to disparage the author's book. I this is just my opinion. I can be completely wrong. Um, really, really wrong, and that's fine. But uh, this is not a professional review. I don't edit or like review or proofread professionally at all. This is just my heartfelt opinion so far as a reader, like a very generic, I mean, I've read hundreds by now of young adult novels, I think. When I look back, wow, yikes, that's a lot. But that sure as hell does not make me a professional. So feel free to completely stop the video and disregard my comments and opinions. This is just, I had to vent. This is one of those books for me and I've only encountered this like twice before in my lifetime. Before that I've like always finished a book to its end. Tonight reading this book I am like, I, I am tempted to just literally skim through it. Like I am not kidding, I don't know if I can read this book in detail right now because it's not off to a great start and I don't think it's even the clichéness of the plot. The plot itself, I mean, come on. Girl meets boy. Boy and girl seem to share a special bond because they're both so unique. They seem to understand each other. Okay, this is, again, this book focuses on Parvin's point of view. And of course, the girl is meant to be quirky and not like other girls and things like that. Which actually, I'll be completely honest, uh, I don't see that very much right now. I could, I could be mistaken, I could be pleasantly surprised and later on down the line, but beyond the fact that uh, Parvin is half Iranian and half white, literally there's like not much special about this girl. Yes, okay, in my opinion, she's got a great sense of humor, I guess, and that's evidenced by what her and her ex essentially playing pranks on unsuspecting beachgoers. Yes, that is how the beginning of this novel starts. It's, I suppose, a creative prank, yes. I mean, they are... What they do is set up some sort of treasure box. I actually don't think we ever find out exactly what is in it. But this treasure box is meant to be found by this um, guy who's trying to find like coins and stuff like with metal detectors. The guy finds the box, the box explodes all over his face with blue ink. Okay, funny. Uh, Parvin and her ex, I might as well give him a name. His name is Wesley. Um, yeah, so basically they are laughing their themselves silly because it's such a good prank. Okay, fine. Cute. But beyond that, I really don't see her sense of humor so far. <sighs> okay, I should actually be a little bit more considered on this considering the fact that she does end up suffering from heartbreak because Wesley dumps her on the first day of high school. So I guess you're not very likely to see her sense of humor at that point. She would be too depressed. Okay, fine. That thought actually just occurred to me now, believe it or not. So funny. You'd think I'd understand. I've actually been there, but like heartbreak and stuff, but whatever. Everyone has. Um, but yeah, okay. I guess I can forgive that, but I would still honestly like to see more of her sense of humor. I would like to see more of what makes her a funny, quirky girl. Besides her dark, curly frizz hair that frizzes up so easily, her complaining about needing to shave, her being so nervous about how she looks in front of Wesley and stuff like that, this beyond, uh, I don't know, having two equally, actually more so, quirky friends, best friends, uh, both of whom are actually are on the LGBTQT community, one of whom is a very famous and of course ridiculously wealthy uh, Instagram influencer, and the other one is, oh my gosh, what else is a quirky best friend going to be into in high school besides arts and crafts? So both of them are unique, 
both, of course, ridiculously loyal, which is a good thing. I mean, obviously what girl is not going to need best friends, right? <sighs> so yeah, but what makes her exactly quirky? Is it the fact that she can speak Iranian? She understands Iranian? Is it her family? Which, I mean, yeah, her parents seem pretty chill. Um, her aunt sounds pretty amazing. Her aunt is still in Iran, living in Iran, as you find out uh, when she's uh, talking to her through FaceTime. And yeah, yet Parvin is described by Wesley, essentially, first, as too loud and too much. Um, yeah, I don't really get any hint of that at all in the beginning of the book. Beyond the prank and beyond her, like what, is her desperately hoping for a boyfriend? That Wesley will be her boyfriend meant to convey she's too much? I don't see that. Um, it kind of describes her outfit in orientation, which I thought was okay. Some sort of floral t-shirt. Uh, oh my gosh. I don't even remember what her pants are like, and she's wearing silver eyeshadow, which, yeah. Okay, I can stand that. That sounds cool. I love silver eyeshadow, so she cares about her looks, her makeup, fashion. Cool. I can totally dig that, but how does that make her quirky? If anything, that kind of makes her a lot like other teenage girls. Okay, in my opinion. Is... Are her friends pretty much supposed to make her quirky? I don't know. Is it the fact that she just speaks her mind, supposedly? Yeah, she pretty much... She's not afraid to share or show her feelings. Okay, fine. That should not make someone too loud or too much. 